Right, <clears throat> data. Here we go. Um, this is um, Holy Spirit course lesson two. We're gonna do a walkthrough. We're gonna try a video this time because this one has lots of visual illustrations, and so we're gonna do our best to try to make it easy to follow for all of you guys. Um, the sure of the audio quality is on my laptop, so let me know. All right, so let's get started. First off, you definitely want to pray. So as a speaker, make sure you always pray for your audience so um, that everything goes well. Um, once we get started, we want to do what's called review. So we're going to look at the review. Um, first up is um, last week we talked about the Holy Spirit and who he is and how he interacts with us. So the Holy Spirit um, is God. And his truth first starts off, we learn about him. We know him through our minds. And then as we begin to focus on God and, and give our life to him and choose to commit to him, it begins to come part of our heart, our spirit, or our emotions. We start to feel and experience God. We're, we're in worship and we start to feel goosebumps or something like that happens. That's experiencing the Holy Spirit. And then out of that connection becomes something amazing, which is we start serving out of the love God gives us and that connection with the Holy Spirit. So it goes from our minds. We know Jesus is God. It starts to connect in our hearts. Wow, Jesus is God and it's true and it's real. And I'm feeling that he is king of my life. And now I serve him with the things I do with my hands or my feet or my mouth or whatever. I serve God. Um, we also talked about the journey of the Holy Spirit. It started off first, God created, the Holy Spirit created everything. Then the Holy Spirit started to fill specific people in this world. And then, and that was in the Old Testament, and then um, <clears throat> the, Jesus came to say, I want to give the Holy Spirit not just to a few people, but to everyone. And he died and rose again so that we could all have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he went to heaven and then the men went and waited for the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit came that Jesus promised to make for everyone. And now everyone, millions and millions of people all around the world, from Africa to Asia to the Western world to everywhere, are experiencing the Holy Spirit in amazing ways. And so this is um, where our journey begins with um, the, the next step we're going to go to, which is um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But before we get into that, does anybody have any questions from last week? The things I just talked about, was there anything confusing? Okay, no? All right, well, like we said before, we're going to be doing uh, uh, tabs because these are very confusing topics. With the, the Holy Spirit, you can't visually see it and feel it. So we're going to be um, doing... Uh, uh, tabs to help mark and understand and think about this so we have clear thoughts and we're not just misunderstanding things. Um, so make sure you understand the blue tabs are for um, what they're marked for, the yellow tab and what it's marked for, the green tab. One is for identity, who God is, or who we are, sorry. Identity is who we are. The next tab is going to be our ability and what God says we can do. So our hands. And the third tab is who God says he is and what it says he can do. And the last tab, that's just for fun, something you like and it really is like a, something that you want to memorize or put right on your wall or write it on your hand or somewhere where you can memorize it. Those are all good. All right, so now we're going to get to the Holy Spirit number two. You guys excited? Uh -huh. I know you are. Great. Right. The, Holy, the goal of today, the, what this goal is going to be of Holy Spirit number two is we want to understand what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus just promised us the Holy Spirit, and then he went to heaven, and then he's, he told us to go and wait. So now we're waiting for God's presence to fill us. But what happens? Why do they call it baptism? And what does this baptism mean? And, and, and how did the Holy Spirit baptism become a baptism? Why do they use it, the word baptism? Um, all these things we're going to answer today. So be sure if you don't know these answers that you come and talk to me and ask me because it's very important that we get this today. So next up, um, what 
let's first look at the, what the Holy Spirit was in the Old Testament. Um, what we have here is we have uh, the water. Okay, we have and these. Let's say just a few of these. These three right here um, that you can see. These represent the 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 Old Testament prophets like David or Saul or Isaiah, and they were filled. And this water, if I don't spill on anything, represents the Holy Spirit. Okay, and He pours it in some people. And he fills them up. And, you know, just in select people at select times. So while other people weren't filled with this Holy Spirit presence, the experience got around them, but not the feeling of it, not the power of it. And so we see in like Isaiah and Saul, and certain people had the Spirit at certain times, but it wasn't everyone all the time. They would say, oh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and preach good news, but not everyone had it. And this is this was reality in the Old Testament is people felt the separation from God. Unlike you and I, we can go to a church where they didn't have this gift that Jesus created for us. So then Jesus came and he made this promise. This is a, an amazing gift that we have now to experience God through. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to read um, from the book of Acts. So let's find, let's check this story out. I mean, God just went up to heaven. Jesus went up to heaven and said, go to Jerusalem and wait. He said to go and wait there. Waiting means they prayed and they saw God. And as they were praying, this is what happened. So go ahead and read it. And they read the verse. Isn't that amazing? After they read it, ask them, what did that mean to you? What, what, what spoke to you about that verse? Let them share. How would you explain this verse in your own words? Okay, great. Yes, that's it. Yeah, they're all there just sitting and waiting. And then God showed up in an amazing way. He spoke to their hearts and tongues of fire came down and touched them. I mean, this is incredible. I mean, imagine if this happened today. That would be so crazy. And can you believe it? Around the world, there's events like this happening. It, the Holy Spirit is unique. It doesn't always look the same. <clears throat> but it's still good in whatever way it chooses to happen. So how does this look for us? Well, um, uh, water baptism, which some of you have done, is different than the Holy Spirit baptism. See, water baptism is if I took this dirty, if I took this cup and say it was covered in dirt, and I said, okay, I'm going to wash it out. So I take this cup and I put it in the water, this water, and I say, okay, I'm going to wash this cup up, and I'm going to get it nice and clean and get all the dirt off of it, right? Well, the cup is clean now, but it's still empty. And the Holy Spirit is, and that's what water baptism is. Water baptism is getting rid of all the gunk and the garbage and saying, I don't want the sin in my life anymore. I just want it to be clean and I want to be made new. Like Jesus created me to be clean and new. But there's still more for us. And that's when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes in. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is where God says, I don't want to just baptize Wash you clean. I want to fill my presence inside of you. Completely fill you up so that you are experiencing new life. So this is the difference of the baptism of water and baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the water is the symbol of cleaning our sins away. Um, the, it's just a metaphor. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is an actual spiritual thing that's not symbolic. It's, it's actually... Um, an experience with the Holy Spirit where he fills you full and gives you boldness to do amazing things that we're going to get into in the next few weeks. It's going to be good. So how does this work? Um, there's Just imagine like this glove um, symbolizes your life and who you are. Everyone has a life, physical body that we can see. So this glove represents your physical body. You can see it, you can touch it, all those amazing things. It's a good looking body, right? But 
Um, it's empty, even though it looks everybody has a body, not everyone has their spirit filled, and so everyone looks like the same. Well, let's say you want to become a Christian, and my hand represents the Holy Spirit. You say, I really, really want God to fill me full. I want his presence completely in me. So Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. He comes in, but there's something in the way. So the Holy Spirit begins to expose to you sin, things in your life that aren't right that you need to turn from so he can fill you completely. Get that garbage out. And you turn and you say, what is it? Oh, money. Money's been in my heart. Jesus, I'm sorry for the money in my heart. I want you to be the sinner. Please get this out. So the Holy Spirit helps get that focus of the wrong things outside of Jesus out of your heart. So then you say, okay, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Jesus, forgive my sins. And as he's coming into your life and working his way in your life, you realize, man, I've been putting fancy technology and cell phones first in my life. Jesus, I'm sorry for that. And get it out of your life. You say, Jesus, come into my life, please. And as he's coming into your life, he starts coming in. And also you realize, oh, I've been focused on fashion and beauty and identity and not on God. I've been more worried about what people think of me than what Jesus thinks of me. Jesus, please forgive me. I put you first in my life, just you first. Fill me completely. I don't want anything else filling my life but you. Because I want your full power. So Jesus says, okay, I'll come in. And he starts working his way and it starts getting more proper. And all of a sudden, ah, oh, there's something in the way. And Jesus lets you know, hey, you're getting your motto or the fancy things in life that you want more than me is in the way and you need to give these things up. Not get rid of them, but just not have them first in your heart. So you say, okay, God, I get rid of all those things. I empty myself out completely. I ask you now to fill me my life so that I don't just have a body, a physical body, but I have a living life full of your power, able to do things I could never do if I were not filled with you. See, this is what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You get power, you get boldness to do things you never would have done if you had just been a glove filled with other things than a hand. And that's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit symbolize, or is to us. Um, and this goes along with our metaphor that we did today. So, um, let's read on to the story um, about this baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, I'm going to read. Okay. So, now what do we read here? We read that not only did the baptism of the Holy Spirit um, come on just a few people, it went on everyone. All these people that were praying began to receive the Holy Spirit. This is the point of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's no longer just for a few select people. It's for everyone. The Holy Spirit's going crazy and just pouring himself out to anyone that's saying, I want it. And he's just going to everyone and filling them full of his presence. The Holy Spirit has gone absolutely ballistically in love and it's showing that love to everyone in this way. I mean, this is just such a crazy story. I mean... And now we're experiencing it all around us, all around the world. Cambodia is just now beginning to experience the massive overflow of the Holy Spirit. Um, we, it has in the past and it's coming back now. And it's very exciting to be a part of it. Um, when the Spirit fills us, uh, we have to understand that this is not just like, a okay, I'm filled with the Spirit and now I'm done. Because the way that it works is the Holy Spirit fills us up with His presence and we share that presence of God and that power. We do great works. We do this or that. But then we start to feel kind of weak. We start to feel a little bit not good enough. And we need, we want more, but where do we get more? Well, the more it comes from the Holy Spirit. He, he As soon as we start feeling empty, he says, Okay, I'm pouring out of you. But I... I will continue to fill you. So even though you might be pouring out, God's coming out of you to bless other people and they experience God through you, 
you in turn are getting filled again and again. So it's not just a one-time thing. So the Holy Spirit says, oh, you're getting empty? You say, Jesus, fill me full again and refill. And you get a refill of joy more and more and more. So God is not just a one-time experience. He's an experience that goes on for the rest of your life and then into heaven and on and on and on. It never stops with him. So let's find out what happens next. The Holy Spirit is forever. So when you read this, you see, what did it say to you? What, did it, what does that mean to you? These are the questions you want to ask each time after they read a verse. I'm not doing this because of time and all these things. Um, the video, but they read this verse and they're like, what does this mean to you? They share what it means. Yeah, that's good. Let's talk about this. In this story right now, they go to Jerusalem. They pray for Jesus to come. They're praying the Holy or the Holy Spirit to come. They don't know what's going to happen. They're just told to wait. Next thing you know, the Holy Spirit comes. They start speaking in tongues, and they're just doing these miracles in front of all these non-Christian people. I mean, this is crazy. And in the middle of it, Peter gets up and starts sharing about Jesus. And we have our first example of a picture of the Holy Spirit coming into a lost world. Peter was transformed. Jesus says you will receive power when the Spirit comes upon you. And that's the best way to recognize the Holy Spirit is there's boldness and power in your heart and your life. You start doing things you would have never have done without God. Peter, um, before the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, was a coward. He denied Jesus three times because he was afraid of what would happen to him the day he was being killed. I mean, imagine your best friend is being killed. And instead of staying up for your best friend, the guy who does everything for you, and you know he's God, instead of saying, hey, stop that, or at the very least, yeah, he's a good guy. Instead, you say, I, I don't know him. And not only are you not saying you don't know him to, like, other guys or other big people, he denied him to a little girl. I mean, he was a coward. And then Jesus comes back, shows him he can destroy death, that he's more powerful than anything. And then Peter he sees this, and he, Jesus says to go and wait. Now here's this man, this guy that denied Jesus three times. Everyone starts speaking in tongues. They're speaking to thousands of people. And Peter stands up in the middle of all of it. He doesn't get become a coward. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. And he starts to speak with boldness about God and about his best friend Jesus. The guy that he let down is now the most important, famous person in his heart, and he wants everyone to know. I mean, to imagine that this would have been him when he denied him just a few, perhaps weeks ago, or 40 days ago. Now, 40 days later, he is transformed. You see, the Holy Spirit does a work in our hearts. He gives us boldness when we fill it with God's presence. We don't know what it will look like, but we know it will be beyond what we could have ever done. It's an adventure with God. Let's look on to your life. Let's look at real life, not just the Bible, but let's take the Bible to us and say, okay, how does this apply or how does this work out? Imagine poetry. Imagine a place where there's multiple cultures and things going on. And people are um, walking around about their own business. Can you imagine what it would be like for this to happen here? Can you imagine what you would do at this place? Do you have the boldness to believe that this is possible? Or are you afraid of even a little girl? Can you stand? And if you say, no, I don't think I could, the question is this, have you asked God to fill you full? Have you asked him for this baptism of the Holy Spirit?
See, first you ask him to cleanse away all the things that are not from him and not first in your life. And then you ask him to fill you, to fill you full all the way to where it overflows and goes to everyone around you. And you're doing things that you look back and say, wow, that was amazing that God did that through me. And tonight, what we can do at the end of this is let's take some time and just get alone. Don't make this about your friends. You can face the wall. I just encourage you to find a place where you're completely separated alone. And just take some time and pray with me. And then what you'll do is, is after I'm alone in the room, when they're away, the act activation is going to be um, to walk them through a prayer of, Jesus, reveal to me the sin in my life that needs to get out of the way. Help me see the things in my life that keep me from being filled with you. And then give them time to think about it. Let the music play. And as you feel led, say, okay, I want you to give those things to God all of those things and just give those up and be emptied to be emptied out and now I want you to lift up your hands and put yourself in a place and say Jesus fill me and just wait and have them do this and wait and they wait and then they come back after they're done after you wait a while and they come back and say okay I'd like to know What's the first thing you heard, felt, or saw when we did this? Um, just share something that you saw that you felt, even if it doesn't make sense. When you said, Jesus, fill me, what happened? And ask them to share. This is a way to get people to express what God is doing and encourage them to step out in this. I'm going to give them an opportunity. The last verse is, is that this is for everyone. Um, that this is, Peter cuts to the heart, this is for everyone to get saved and to know God. It's not just for a few people, but it's for all the people in the world. Because, and of course, this is kind of the symbol, the main metaphor we're using, which is, this is your body. Your body is um, physical. You can see it, you can touch it, but it's, it has no power in it because this represents God. We know that God exists. We know that his power is all around us, but yet we don't have access to it. But we're created to have access to it. You are made to be connected to God. So when you say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. You are putting yourself in connection with God. And then when you have him in your life, he begins to light up your life, filling your life with his power and filling it full to overflow. And that is what we want to see in your life, is we want to see a life full of his presence and full of his power, overflowing out, showing his light to the lost world, being filled with his presence and power. And this concludes lesson two.